Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So as we have already discussed different modules on this specially uh, for particle characteristics, size reduction, size enlargement, fluid flow through the solid beds, even uh, particulate materials, their flow through the bed and also how to separate those particles. And also we are uh, discussing about uh, the solid particles by membrane process. There are different types of membranes that we have discussed. And also we have discussed that uh, what are the you know nanoparticles and their characteristics and how uh, that nanoparticles can be synthesized. So in the last module of this course is uh, basically adsorption. So here in this adsorption module, we will try to you know discuss about uh, what is the principle of adsorption, what is the application of adsorption and what are the you know analysis method of that adsorption process, what are the adsorption equilibrium, how that equilibrium can be you know you know utilized to assess that you know adsorption isotherms and also we will be discussing about the kinetics of that adsorption and what are the different kinetic equation even models to assess that adsorption we will be discussing in this module. Today we will try to uh, discuss about that uh, what is the basic principle and also what is the application of that adsorption. Before coming to that point the general term for that separation of that particles uh, or separation of that you know gaseous molecules or separation of that you know some other compounds or ions that actually uh, being done on a certain you know solid surface. So that general you know process of that separation of that molecules from the other streams onto a surface of solid that will be called as a sorption process. Okay. So the sorption is basically an operation or you can say process in which a certain components in a mixer are selectively transferred to insoluble materials that is suspended or packed in a column or in a suppose in a bed. Now in this case the terms the absorption is basically the common terms. Now you will see that some will be you know absorption means here absorption or maybe adsorption both terms may be coming. So here one is that called adsorption another is called absorption. Adsorption means AD adsorption means that gas or liquid molecules to be you know transported from the gaseous medium or liquid medium to the solid surfaces. So this is called adsorption AD whereas absorption AB in that case it is generally considered that when gaseous molecules to be transported from that gaseous stream to the liquid streams that is called absorption AB. So that is why this absorption basically uh, you know consist of these two terms that is called you know absorption and adsorption. Now in term in case of adsorption that is AD where that gaseous molecule or liquid molecules to be transported to that you know solid surface that is called adsorption AD. That adsorption may be of different types maybe sometimes you will say that it is called ion exchange sometimes it is called chromatography and simply adsorption also. So they are all the terms basically in the same that principle of that you know transporting that gaseous molecule or liquid molecule to the solid surface. So that is called adsorption. Sometimes ion exchange also to be called as a adsorption because here in this case ion will be transported from the one stream to the solid stream. So that is called ion exchange. Chromatography itself also it is one uh, you know uh, method or process you can say by which you analyze what are the you know molecules how much molecules quantitative or qualitative analysis of that molecules in a particular streams that can be you know assessed by this chromatography this is basically by you know transporting that molecules to a surface of the solid. So this is called chromatography. So these are all actually uh, under that absorption common term absorption process. Okay. So in this case if we consider that adsorption process you will see in the uh, slide it is shown that there will be two terms uh, one will be called solute or sorbates and another term is called sorbent. 
solute or sorbates is basically the components that are selectively transferred are known as solutes and in this case the sorbent solutes would be called as a sorbates okay whereas sorbent is basically a solid surface on which that you know sorbates or you can say that solute to be you know transported that means the materials that is used for sorbing the solutes are known as sorbents so which materials to be used to adsorb or taking or attaching those materials okay on the surface of that material okay so it is called sorbent so there are two terms basically one is called solute another is called sorbent or you can say other terms as sorbets which is called as solute also now what are the application of that adsorption there will be some industrial application of this adsorption some application will be as gas purification some will be as liquid purification gas purification basically coming as that sometimes you need to remove some organics uh, from the vent streams of gaseous that is effluent and also sometimes you need to remove all of sulfur dioxide from vent streams you need to remove all of uh, you know sulfur compounds from gas streams you need to water vapor removal from air or other gaseous streams also you need to you know remove of solvents and odors from air or sometimes you need to remove that nox from that air stream or carbon dioxide can be removed from the natural gas or some other you know bulk gas separation into its uh, different components can be you know done by this you know adsorption process you will see sometimes uh, you know acetone and vent streams so they are acetone to be separated where a mixer of you know ethylene uh, and vent streams there so that ethylene to be you know adsorbed or separated by this adsorption process normal paraffin or isoparaffin mixer where you have to separate that normal paraffin from that mixer of normal and isoparaffins also other aromatics so these are the some you know uh, important applications which are you know industrially done by this adsorption process and then coming to that liquid purification there you will see sometimes moisture or water that is to be you know separated from the organic solutions so there adsorption process can be used even some organic uh, compounds that is also to be you know removed from the you know water stream there also this adsorption process can be used even some other uh, you know that application like removal of sulfur compounds from organic solutions decolorization of solutions liquid bulk separation normal paraffins isoparaffins mixer where you can you know uh, uh, separate the normal paraffins as a liquid from that mixer even paraxylene or uh, you know mixer of uh, mixer of this paraxylene with other you know aromatics that you can separate those you know paraxylene or other aromatics just by adsorption process even you can uh, separate that uh, some uh, fructose uh, dextrose mixer from which you can separate that fructose or dextrose separately by this adsorption process so these are some also important application for that liquid purification by this adsorption process other applications for that you know uh, ion exchange and chromatography those are also that adsorption process so in this case sometimes you know that for water softening water demineralization even decolorization of the sugar solutions recovery of uranium from acidless uh, you know solutions even recovery of antibiotics and vitamins from the fermentation broths that you can do it by this ion exchange uh, method we will discuss about that ion exchange later on and also chromatography is basically used uh, in, in food industries to separate and analyze that additives is there any additives in the food contents or not that can be analyzed by this chromatography method even vitamins what is the uh, amount of vitamins in a particular that plant or you know uh, plant or other you know organic sources there so that can be you know analyzed by this chromatography method and also some preservatives that you have to analyze that is actually uh, used in food as ingredients there and also you will see that some amino acids also that is mixed in the food materials for increase or enhance that you know protein contents there in the food 
So, what will be that amino acids that can be also assessed by this chromatography? In paper a chromatography you will see that it is used as a purification and separation of different uh, you know organic compounds from the mixture. So, these are some industrial applications of ion exchange and chromatography. Then coming to the point that uh, here some suitability criteria of the absorbent for industrial applications in which cases or what will be the basic criteria based on which you can select this adsorption process or ion exchange or chromatography process that you have to know. This is basically depends on that uh, some material characteristics of that adsorbents even uh, what molecules to be adsorbed that molecule uh, characteristics also, also will be you know uh, effect on that you know selectivity of that adsorption process. Also you will see that to you know uh, minimize that absorbent utilization sometimes that the capacity of that you know materials to be considered for that selection process and also uh, sometimes you will see that some hardness or mechanical strength uh, of that you know materials which are being used for that you know absorbing those you know gaseous or uh, liquid molecules that you have to you know assess and also uh, sometimes you know sub materials that you have to select for adsorption that you know uh, should be you know easily regenerable uh, means uh, once it is used for adsorption and after you know adsorption process uh, complete then uh, uh, you uh, have to you know uh, reactivate that uh, you know uh, material so that you can use reuse that material again uh, that means for further you know operation. So, so that that materials should not be wasted uh, in the you know operation. So, in that case capacity of that solid materials to be known whether it will be you know that uh, uh, easily regenerable or not. Also sometimes that uh, uh, you have to consider that basic understanding of transport processes of that you know compounds from the gaseous streams or from the liquid streams to the you know solid surface or through that you know pores of that solid surface there. So, you have to understand that you know transport process, mass transfer processes, even sometimes the heat transfer processes of that materials that uh, assess uh, uh, what extent of that adsorption can be done based on that capacity of adsorption or that you know uh, mass transfer capacity of that material or heat transfer capacity of material. Sometimes uh, after adsorbing those materials by that you know adsorbent or solid materials you will see that there will be some resistance to be generating after continuous adsorption of that solid surface. So, those uh, materials whenever it will be adsorbed on the solid surface they will make some you know fouling or you know deposition as a layer that sometimes will resist that further adsorption of the molecules. So, that is why you know that fouling or that resistivity of that materials by depositing those adsorbed uh, material on the surface that also to be you know assessed. Also you will see that you have to choose that you know low cost adsorbent where uh, uh, that you can uh, you know get uh, high proficiency of that materials adsorption by this low cost materials that will be more economic. Also you will see that whether these materials to be thermally uh, stable or not or chemically stable or not whether that some you know corrosion materials will happen just after adsorption of those you know chemical compounds or gaseous compounds on the surface of it or not. So, that also you have to know also stability that means here that uh, how long that you know materials can be adsorbed uh, those materials after adsorption also uh, whether that can be easily you know uh, regenerable or not just by you know supplying heat or heating that materials and based on that heating of uh, you know material whether that materials will be that is uh, enough hard or enough strength to you know resist that you know temperature or not. So, temperature, uh, temperature strength that is to be you know also assessed. Also you will see that some you know materials to be used that that easily can you know gets at us uh, uh, those you know that adsorbent molecules on the surface. So, in that case uh, uh, sometimes that uh, surface area of the adsorbent to be known also you will see that uh, sometimes some adsorbents per unit gram uh, 
uh, that uh, more surface area will be creating in that case more adsorption will be uh, there. So, based on that you know surface area available surface area of that solid material some materials after you know synthesis or adsorbent you will see that uh, that may be from the natural source or from other chemicals or composite materials you will see that those you know uh, adsorbent after synthesis that may give some you know specific surface area that is specific surface area you know that means what will be the surface per unit gram of that material. So, for different materials this specific surface area will be different. So, in that case those materials will be giving more surface area per unit gram that can be used for adsorbent. Of course, that uh, parallelly you have to judge whether those materials have uh, you know uh, enough capability of adsorbing uh, other organic or gaseous materials on the surface or not that also to be considered. And also sometimes you will see that during that adsorption there will be some chemical reactions will happen with the adsorbed uh, molecules with that you know adsorbent molecules. In that case that chemical adsorption to be considered in what will be the you know uh, adsorption capability and based on that reaction whether that desorption capability will be enough or not that also to be assessed after reaction. So, in this case we have discussed that what will be the application what is the basic mechanism and also what is that different application for ion exchange chromatography even also what are the you know uh, different points to be you know considered for that adsorption uh, materials. Now, let us uh, discuss about that adsorption uh, uh, more elaborately here. Uh, in this case uh, adsorption can be simply defined as we can say the process based on which the concentration of a solute which may be molecules in a gas stream or a dissolved or suspended substance in a liquid stream that will be attached on the surface of a solid by diffusion. So, basically the adsorption is a process where based on the concentration gradient the solute will be transported from the gaseous or liquid stream to the solid surface of that adsorbent okay, or dissolved on that substance uh, in the liquid stream to the you know surface of the solid by you know diffusion. So, this is the basic definition of the adsorption process. Here in this case molecules or atoms or ions in a gas or liquid that will diffuse to the surface of a solid where they bond with the solid surface or are held there by you know weak intermolecular forces. So, whenever that particles will be transported from the gaseous stream or solid stream I uh, sorry liquid stream you will see that during that attachment of that surface of that solid that is adsorbent the during that adsorption that molecules or atoms or ions that will be uh, transporting to that solid surface and it will be held there onto the surface of the solid just by intermolecular forces. Okay. So, this is uh, that you have to remember here in this picture it is shown that adsorbed solute is coming here as a you know that uh, yellow color object here. It is coming on the surface of the solid here and it is being attached by the intermolecular force. So, on which you know material it will be you know adsorbed or attached it will be called as adsorbent whereas those molecules which will be coming on to the surface of this uh, molecules and attached of the surface that will be called as adsorbed solute and you will see that some materials that is adsorbent sometimes it will have some pores that means uh, there will be a gap between that inside that you know solid materials. So, in that gap also that molecules adsorbed solute will be you know transporting and they will get the adsorbed on the uh, surface of that you know uh, adsorbent. So, here we can uh, have this mechanism of this adsorption by just how intermolecular force will be acting on that you know solute to get adsorbed on the solid surface. Also you will see that to achieve a very large surface area for adsorption per unit volume highly porous solid adsorbents with a small diameter interconnected pores are used there and the porous structure of that material you will say that uh, that can uh, account for up to 50 percent of the volume of the material. And also you will see that uh, at the time of that adsorption the solid adsorbent will become saturated and that adsorption will be you know continued 
till its you know saturation uh, will be there. That means that will uh, the solid materials uh, will come to an equilibrium condition where there will be no further absorption of the molecules on the surface of the uh, you know solid. So that is called you know saturation. Okay. So during that adsorption, the solid adsorbent becomes saturated or nearly saturated with the adsorbate. And now to recover the adsorbate and allow the adsorbent to be reused, it is to be regenerated by dissolving the adsorbed substances. Okay. So parallelly both the things to be considered here that you have to first adsorb the molecule or solute on the surface of the you know adsorbent and to reuse that adsorbent that you know adsorbent to be regenerated just by dissolving those materials for its reuse. Okay? So, this is called that desorption. So, adsorption and desorption both will be parallelly you know will be there in a certain operation. So, here in this picture it is shown that in a adsorber in a column where some you know adsorbent bed will be there you know in that bed maybe you will see that carbon uh, or molecular sheep here it is shown in the picture and in this uh, uh, molecular sheep you will see that uh, some biogas which contains methane, nitrogen, oxygen, moisture, hydrogen sulphide or carbon dioxide all those components there you will see that at a certain pressure and temperature this uh, you know uh, components can be separated from this biogas whereas at a certain pressure methane gas to be separated you know from the mixture of other components here like nitrogen oxygen uh, moisture hydrogen sulphide and carbon dioxide. So here in this picture it is shown that how that you know mixture of that gas is uh, allowed to pass through that adsorber and then it can be separated by this you know adsorbent uh, like here carbon molecular sheath here which is actually being used to adsorb that uh, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, moisture, hydrogen, sulphide or carbon dioxide molecule on that you know adsorbent. Whereas methane molecule will not be adsorbed by this you know adsorbent that will be separated from that column. And after this adsorption you can regenerate this carbon or molecular sheath just by heating it because if you change the temperature you will see that those adsorbed molecules will be dissolved from that you know adsorbent. Uh, material. So, removal of adsorbates can be achieved by changing the pressure or the temperature itself. So, if you are doing adsorption based on that uh, you know pressure change that will be called pressure swing adsorption. If you uh, do the uh, adsorption or desorption based on that temperature you know application that will be called as temperature swing adsorption or desorption. So, based on which you will get uh, these two types of adsorption or desorption. Now what is the mechanism of that adsorption here as shown in the picture that we have already discussed here the molecules that is present in the interior of that adsorbent are completely surrounded by other molecules on all sides of the materials and then there will be a intermolecular force that will be you know act on that you know molecules by which that molecules will be you know attached to the surface of the solid. Okay. So, a molecule at the surface is surrounded by large number of molecules which will be you know intact by that intermolecular forces. And because the unbalanced inward forces of attraction on that surface of adsorbent they have the property to attract and retain the molecules of a gas or solute on their surfaces. So, here you will see that on the solid surface you know adsorption of gaseous molecules happened and these molecules are attached by intermolecular forces and it is being adsorbed after that you know by temperature or pressure it can be dissolved and it can be separated here. Here also in the you know animation it is shown that here these some molecules are being adsorbed on the solid surface that is called adsorbent and then uh, you know that uh, it will be you know attached on the surface by that you know intermolecular forces. And before coming to that there will be a transport uh, of that molecules uh, you know in the bulk phases and after that it will be coming and get in contact with that solid surfaces and intermolecular force will be acting on that molecule and it will be you know adsorbed on the surface. Now in this case you have to remember some important you know point here, here adsorption always will be an exothermic process 
and during adsorption process the residual force on the surface of the adsorbent decreases it means surface energy will decrease this decrease in the form of heat is called that heat of adsorption and heat of adsorption is defined as the amount of heat that is evolved when one mole of uh, any gas uh, is adsorbed on a solid adsorbent surface, uh, surface which is called as heat of adsorption or sometimes it will be called as enthalpy of adsorption. So, this is basically that what is the heat is required okay, or heat is evolved when one mole of any gas is adsorbed or dissolved on or from a solid you know uh, surfaces that will be called as heat of adsorption or enthalpy of adsorption or you can say that you know enthalpy or heat of desorption like this. And this uh, enthalpy that is adsorption enthalpy delta H is always to be negative. So, these are some important notes that you have to remember. And then major types of adsorbents that also you have to know what are the different types of adsorbents are being used for you know separation of different gaseous or liquid molecules from their streams. So, what are those adsorbents? You will see there are some you know major type of adsorbents are given here in the slides. Here uh, activated alumina, silica gel, activated carbon molecular ship, carbon molecular ship zeolites, clay, even polymer and resins. These are widely used adsorbent you know for the separation of different gaseous and liquid molecules onto the surface of this adsorbent. And this material will have some you know characteristics such as what is its porosity, what is pore structure, even what is the nature of its you know adsorbing surfaces and also you will see that what is the pore sizes, how it can be classified, what are the different types of pore sizes will be there. Maybe you know there are uh, different ranges of pores will be there, you know some will be macro pores, some will be meso pores, some will be micro uh, pores also. So, macro pores the uh, you know adsorbent sometimes you will see that diameters will be in excess of 50 you know nanometer meso pores it will be diameters in the range of 2 to 50 nanometer even diameter in smaller than 2 nanometer it will be called as micro pores like this. So, these are different types of adsorbents with their basic characteristics of that solid and also you know their porosity pore structure will be different. So, and what are those major types of adsorbents are used for that you know separation of those molecules. Uh, I, I think uh, you can understand now in this slides it is uh, given. So, try to remember those you know uh, major types of adsorbents. And typical applications of that you know adsorbents one by one let us have some you know typical application of that you know adsorbent. If you are considering that activated alumina, this uh, activated alumina actually basically used for drying of gases, refrigerants, organic solvents, even transfer of oils like this. Even this uh, activated alumina is basically used for desiccant in packings and you know double glazing like that. Even dew point control of natural gas can be done by this activated alumina. Silica gel is basically used for drying of gases, organic solvents, transformation of oils, also removal of hydrochloric acid from the hydrogen. Even you will see that hydrochloric uh, hydro hydrogen chloride gas from the hydrogen and hydrogen chloride gas mixer removal of fluorine in alkylation process. So, basically this silica gel are being used for those purposes. Even you will see the some typical applications of the commercial adsorbents for activated carbon and you know molecular ship carbon. These are two types of carbons are generally used for you know water purification, nitrogen separation from the air, hydrogen separation from the syn gas even uh, ethane from you know methane and hydrogen gas, even purification of helium, removal of SOX and NOx, even recovery of solvent vapors by this you know activated carbon and molecular ship carbons, removal of odors uh, from gaseous streams, even uh, separation of vinyl chloride monomer from the air. So, all those operations are being done by this activated carbon and molecular ship carbon. Some other typical applications of you know adsorbent like this molecular ships zeolites. This is one of the important you know adsorbent which are widely used for different applications. This is basically used for oxygen separation from air, drying of gases, removing water from the azeotropes, 
even sweetening sour gases and liquid separation, also purification of hydrogen, separation of ammonia and hydrogen gas, even recovery of carbon dioxide, separation of oxygen and argon from the mixture of air uh, with other streams, even removal of acetylene, propane and butane from the air, separation of xylenes and ethyl benzene from the mixture, even uh, you will see that uh, separation of olefins and aromatics from the paraffins. Other applications like uh, if you want to that uh, uh, control of you know mercury and NOx and SOx from the air that you can use this molecular shift zeolites. Okay. So, these are some you know applications given for the you know application of this uh, molecular shift zeolites. Sometimes you will see that uh, some uh, you know polymers even resins some you know that biomaterials also are to be used for you know adsorbent or as a you know adsorbent uh, uh, for separation of uh, different you know gaseous and uh, liquid molecules. In that case polymers and resins are generally used for you will see that water purification especially for you know arsenic removal, uh, even uh, uh, some uh, color removal from that water, dye removal from the water. Even uh, you will see that sometimes uh, the odor removal from that you know water that can be used by this you know uh, resins. Even uh, also you will see that removal of organics from the hydrogen peroxide, purification of steroids, amino acids from the mixer, even recovery of proteins, enzymes by this polymers or resins can be done, separation of aromatics from the aliphatic compounds those also uh, you know are being used uh, uh, for those you know separation of that aromatics from the aliphatic compound mixer and also separation of fatty acids from the water and toluene that also uh, uh, used uh, for this purpose. So, this polymer and resins are being used uh, in the uh, uh, different purposes as shown in the slide here. Sometimes clay are also being used for uh, separation or treatment of edible oils you know that uh, removal of organic pigments refining of minerals oils, removal of polychlorinated you know sometimes biphenyls those are used you know for this uh, application. Now you will, there are two types of you know absorption you will see one will be physical another will be called chemical absorption. Physical absorption where you will see that van der Waal you know uh, adsorption it will be sometimes called they are you know uh, this van der Waal intermolecular force to be applied for there and in this case. Uh, you know the individually of that adsorbent and the adsorbent are preserved there and in this case the adsorption occurs when the intermolecular attractive forces between you know molecules of that solid adsorbent and the gas are greater than those between molecules of the gas itself. So, this is the main important point here for this physical adsorption process. In this case intermolecular attractive forces of course, you know will be greater than that you know molecules which are going to be adsorbed on the surface. What is that intermolecular forces? So, that should be you know you know that intermolecular attractive forces of that you know molecules of solid adsorbent will be greater than that those between molecules of the gas itself. And in this case uh, this adsorption basically occurs quickly through mono or multimolecular layer thickness of that adsorbent surfaces. And uh, you will see that uh, chemiabsorption that is activated uh, you know adsorption it is called. So, this physical adsorption and chemiabsorption we can say that classification that will be depending on the type of forces between the adsorbate and adsorbent. In case of chemiabsorption you will see that there is a transfer of or you can say sharing of electron or breakage of the adsorbate into atoms or radicals which are bound separately and chemiabsorption that will be you know occurs uh, just by formation of chemical bonds between the adsorbate and adsorbent. Okay. So, this is the basic difference here, here uh, that bonds will be formed by that adsorbent and adsorbent where are uh, physical absorption there will be a you know breakage of that intermolecular force between that solid surface of that adsorbent with the you know that uh, molecule or uh, you know uh, forces of that uh, gaseous or uh, liquid molecule itself there. 
and chemiabsorption from a gas generally takes place only at temperature greater than 200 degree <coughs> Celsius and may be slow and irreversible whereas physical absorption is very fast that will be through that uh, mono or multi molecular layer ok. So, these are basic uh, differences of that you know physical absorption uh, physical adsorption and chemiabsorption chemi based on that you know type of forces between the adsorbate and adsorbent axon. And also uh, some other points uh, that uh, you know physical and chemiabsorption that you have to remember in this case that the heat of physical adsorption is in the same order of magnitude as the heat of condensation. Whereas, you will see that heat of chemisorption is of the same order as of the corresponding. And physical adsorption will occur under suitable temperature pressure conditions in any gas solid system. Whereas, chemisorption takes place only if the gas is capable of forming a chemical bond with the surface. Also, you will see that in a physically you know adsorbed molecules can be removed unchanged at a reduced pressure at the same temperature. Whereas, uh, in case of chemisorption the removal of the chemisorbed layer is far more difficult. In case of physical adsorption can involve you know the formation of multimolecular layers whereas, chemisorption is always completed by the formation of a mono layer. And uh, in case of physical adsorption is instantaneous although the diffusion into the porous adsorbent may be time consuming, but it will be you know faster. Whereas, you know, you know that uh, in case of chemisorption it may be instantaneous uh, generally uh, requires activation energy for the separation. And also you will see that some factors that will be affecting on that adsorption that effect may be you know uh, nature of the adsorbent and adsorbent that depends on that. That effect may be based on the surface area of the adsorbent, that effect may be based on the temperature, that effect may be based on the pressure. In case of that uh, adsorption ok based on that uh, you know effect of nature of you know adsorbent and adsorbent we can say that the amount of the gas that will be adsorbed that will be depending upon the nature of the adsorbent and the gas which is to be adsorbed. So, that means nature what type of materials are there that is also important. And also the surface area means here larger the surface area will give you that extent of adsorption that means more adsorption will be there for that larger surface area under a given condition of temperature and pressure. And uh, according to La Chatelier's principles you will see that uh, the decrease in temperature sometimes would increase the adsorption and vice versa. And also the magnitude of adsorption increases with the increasing pressure and vice versa. So, these are some you know factors that will affect on adsorption. In this case you have to note that the adsorption usually takes place with the evaluation of heat that is exothermic process and also adsorption of a gas is followed by a decrease in volume. And for the adsorption you need to have some idea what are the equipment generally being used for that adsorption. You will see in the market there are different types of equipments available for you know adsorption process to be executed. In that case you will see some will be steer tank you know adsorber, fixed bed adsorption, some will be moving bed adsorber, some will be you know desorber and regenerator as an you know equipment there. So, here in this picture some you know moving bed adsorber here some solid particles would be moving stage wise or in a column or in a you know that in a uh, stage wise you know during that movement of the solid materials they will come in contact with the gaseous or liquid molecules and uh, you know uh, adsorb those you know molecules and uh, also it will be passing through that you know desorber system where that uh, adsorbed molecules to be again detaching from their surfaces by a certain temperature or pressure effect. And so, also you will see that some adsorber will be a, you know that uh, fluidized system uh, in that case you know solid particles will be you know fluidizing by the you know flow of gas that is inert gas may be will be there where that solid particles during that fluidization 
you will see that uh, that will be come in contact with that you know gaseous or liquid you know that molecules uh, uh, in the fluidized bed and then uh, it will be absorbed those uh, molecules from the uh, stream and in this case the advantage is that they are getting more mixed inside the you know fluidized bed and uh, also uh, mass transfer and heat transfer characteristics will be higher compared to the other system there. And uh, also in the star steer tank reactor you will see that there are also that uh, some mechanical provisions to be you know uh, given there to you know steer that solid liquid or gas uh, especially for slurry systems there you will see that uh, filtration uh, systems or you can say that uh, you know adsorption of liquid molecule molecule uh, on the surface of that you know solid surface in a slurry uh, how that can be adsorbed by uh, you know uh, uh, adsorbent as a solid material there and uh, this solid materials actually mixed with the liquid uh, and it will be made at a slurry and it will be continuously steered in the steer tank reactor and then uh, after a certain times with respect to time that you know uh, solid particles will be adsorbed on the uh, adsorbent. And then uh, coming to that uh, here it is shown here uh, that steer tank uh, you know slurry adsorption. In this case you will see that uh, a base of liquid will be added to a uh, powdered adsorbent such as activated carbon in an agitated vessel to form a slurry. The main application is for the removal of very small amounts of dissolved and relatively large molecules such as coloring agents from water. And in this case you will see that uh, the required residence time of the operation is mainly determined by how fast equilibrium will be approached. Here residence time required means how long that particles will be come in contact with that you know, you know liquid uh, in the tank itself. So uh, that will be you know uh, required more so that that more adsorption efficiency will be there. Generally the spent adsorbent is removed from the slurry by filtration or you know sedimentation and is discarded there. So whatever you know adsorbent will be spent for that adsorption you know that will be removed from the slurry by filtration process. That filtration we have already discussed earlier. So based on that filtration process you can separate those you know solid materials from the slurry. For large scale operation multiple bass or cross flow or counter current mode can be used here. So here as shown in the picture that multiple bears even a counter current mode of this operation is shown here. Then fixed bed adsorber here you will see that the adsorption is done in this case uh, a cyclic bass operated fixed bed here as shown in the picture. It is an unsteady state rate controlled process especially it is wise to use for separation of gas and liquid molecules. Uh, especially for you know removal of you know dissolved organic compounds from the water and also adsorption occurs in this case in a particular region of the bed uh, that is called mass transfer zone uh, where you will see that uh, not in that particular zone of this adsorption in this bed generally uh, that up to which region that packing materials will be there and uh, initially that uh, the, it will take some time to uh, you know adsorb on that surface and then it will take and after a certain time it will be increased that you know rate of adsorption and then uh, getting saturation and uh, after saturation there will be no adsorption process there. So there will be certain you know that uh, you know mass transfer zone in this case and based on which that you know efficiency of the adsorption process can be assessed. So here in the picture it is shown that you will see that uh, uh, two columns are there in one columns there will be a mixture of you know some maybe you know that components of uh, different types of uh, liquid molecules some molecules will be adsorbed on the solid surface here in a uh, bed uh, some solid surface which is there or solid materials it is as uh, it is used as a adsorbent. So this adsorbent will be used and uh, from the feed solution that adsorbent will adsorb that required molecules which is to be you know adsorbed and then it will be taken out that other uh, you know uh, unseparated uh, you know molecules from the bottom where after completion of one base of this adsorbent uh, you know for this adsorption process those uh, to be transported to the you know other you know column that is called desorption column that is also fixed bed here the solid materials will not be moving that is what is called fixed bed. So this fixed bed will be used to you know again uh, dissolve those you know uh, adsorbed molecules there. So in this case uh, by this combination of adsorption and desorption 
process uh, you will see that uh, mixture of light you know hydrocarbon with that heavy hydrocarbons can be separated by this adsorption process. And in this case that you have to remember some factors uh, that may be considered for that design of this fixed bit adsorber or adsorber or uh, desorber there. Uh, in this case uh, some arrangement to be considered whether you know that total feed flow rate or you know allowable pressure drop or energy demands length of the MTZ that means uh, mass transfer zone will be economically designed or not that also to be you know considered here. So, in this case we can say that uh, the factors which determine the number and the arrangement of fixed beds that will include the total feed flow rate, allowable pressure drop, energy demands, even length of that mass transfer zone and also what are the methods of that generation of that you know adsorb material or adsorbent you can say and also what will the capital investment required for this adsorption process. And here desorption or regeneration of the adsorbents what is the mechanism for that you will see that adsorbent principles have finite capacity of that fluid phase molecules whereas you will see that an extended contact with the fluid actually from which that components to be separated will ultimately lead to a creation of a thermodynamic equilibrium between the solid adsorbent and the fluid phases and at this equilibrium condition you will see that the rates of adsorption and desorptions will be equal and the net loading on the solid cannot increase further. Therefore, sometimes it will be required to you know regenerate that adsorbent you know or to you know dispose of it for its further use. And also that uh, you know practical methods of desorption and regeneration include like you know include some you know important you know criteria or important points or important you know you can say that factor that is to be considered like if suppose temperature increase then what will happen if uh, reduce the partial pressure what will happen even uh, concentration if you reduce what will happen and purging with an inlet uh, you know inert fluid or other change of chemical conditions if you change then uh, what will be the uh, effect on that desorption process. So, that is to be you know considered. Okay. So, here uh, you will see that uh, desorption and regeneration uh, include one or more usually combination of the following like this increase in temperature, reduction in partial pressure, reduction in concentration, purging with an inert fluid, even change of chemical conditions, displacement with a more strongly adsorbing species like this. So, the final choice of regeneration methods depends on technical and economic consideration. Now, different types of fixed bed adsorption process also there you will see that some will be you know based on that pressure, some will be you know based on the temperature, some will be based on that is there any inert gas can be passed uh, for that you know regeneration process, sometimes vacuum to be produced to you know by enhance that adsorption, sometimes you know that displacement parts adsorption process to be followed other adsorption cycle example like electrosorption also there. So, there are different types of fixed bed adsorption process here. It will be called as pressure swing adsorption, temperature swing adsorption, inert parts swing adsorption or regeneration, vacuum swing adsorption, even displacement parts adsorption and other adsorption cycle like electrosorption. Pressure swing adsorption what is that basically? In this case you will see that this adsorption will be taking place at an elevated pressure whereas, desorption occurs at neat ambient pressure. Also you will see that some specific adsorbent materials like zeolite, activated carbon molecular sheaves etcetera are used as a trap preferentially that adsorbing the target gas molecules or liquid molecules at a high pressure. And in this case the process after adsorption it will be you know swing to a low pressure operation that is called that uh, you know you know desorption operation. So, desorption operation uh, will be carried out after that adsorption but just by you know lowering the pressure. So, that is why it is called pressure swing adsorption. So, this pressure swing adsorption process can be used to separate that gases in a mixture because different gases tend to be attracted to different solid surfaces more or less strongly based on that pressure. You will see that under high pressure some gaseous, com gaseous components tend to be attracted to the solid surfaces and hence it is adsorbed. 
whereas other components will not be you know attracted to the solid surfaces at that high pressure. So, in that case the high pressure will enhance that adsorption process. So, under this pressure an adsorbent bed of zeolite will attract the suppose nitrogen more strongly than oxygen. This is one example. Suppose there is a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. You will see that at high pressure you will see that zeolites will attract nitrogen compared to that you know uh, oxygen more you know strongly. Okay? So, this is your uh, you know uh, pressure swing adsorption. And then temperature swing adsorption you will see that for any given partial pressure of the adsorbent in the gas phase you will see that an increase in temperature leads to a decrease in the you know affinity to you know uh, get it detached that means uh, in the quantity dissolved, dissolved there. So, in this case you will see that if the partial pressure remains constant at suppose certain, certain pressure P1 and increasing that temperature from you know T1 to T2 you will see that this you know this will you know decrease the equilibrium loading from you know some quantity Q1 to Q2. That means if you increase the temperature there you will see that adsorption capability will be decreasing. So, based on that temperature differences and based on that capability of adsorption based on this temperature the operation will be you know of executed in such a way that after adsorption the temperature to be immediately you know increased so that that uh, at low pressure you can get you know higher adsorption or for the desorption if you you know decrease the temperature what will happen there you will see that uh, uh, you know quantity of adsorption will be more there. So, in this direction the changing of temperature they are you know that adsorption and desorption to be executed. So, here you will see that an efficient temperature swing adsorption process for separating carbon dioxide from carbon dioxide nitrogen mixture that can be adsorbed uh, by you know magnesium uh, even uh, you will see that uh, MOF 74 system as an adsorbent. Okay? So, here you will see that uh, uh, temperature swing you know adsorption that will be you know based on that temperature change and you can get that different adsorption and, and desorption process based on that uh, different type of uh, different capability of that adsorbent molecule based on that temperature. Several commercial uh, you know applications of the Zorvex uh, process exist as shown in the table here like some process it will be called as Molex, Olex, Parex, Evex and Serex. Molex means here separation of linear or branched paraffins. In this case uh, some zeolite will be used that will be you know 5 a zeolite it is called alumino silicate crystal with average pores measuring uh, of 5 angstrom uh, its size and uh, it can be uh, generated by regenerated by you know some temperature uh, for this you know uh, light naphtha separation. And then Olex process basically that separation of olefins from the saturated isomers by uh, CAX uh, adsorbent that is called calcium exchanged uh, you know zeolite X is here basically exchanged. Parex generally you know uh, it is uh, used for that uh, paraxylene separation from the C8 aromatics mixture there and uh, it is also being done by you know strontium uh, uh, barium yttrium uh, you know conjugates where uh, that potassium barium exchange zeolite also can be used for this uh, you know separation as an adsorbent here and in this case uh, also that uh, para diethyl benzene can be uh, you know regenerated after this adsorption process and evex process generally ethyl benzene from that C8 aromatics adsorbent uh, basically sodium yttrium you know complex can be used in this case uh, you know after separation that uh, regeneration of toluene can be there as a separate molecules and also serex there generally fructose separation from fructose glucose mixer and here also calcium yttrium you know complex can be used there for separation. Other processes like aerosorb, aromax even add shape process like this where aerosorb basically the separation of aromatics and saturates from the cracked naphtha. Aromax is basically para from C8 uh, aromatics 
at shape basically fructose from fructose glucose mixture. And in this case, uh, you will see that some silica gel, even uh, you know exchanged zeolite, even some resins also can be used respectively. Then uh, coming to that moving bed adsorption and desorption process, you will see that some uh, advantage of moving bed processes for the adsorption is that the adsorbent can be regenerated as soon as it uh, you know its role in the adsorption step has been completed. And in this case additionally heat transfer in the moving and fluidized bed system will be there and it will give you the better uh, result compared to the fixed bed. And also various types of moving bed systems are available for this you know adsorption process like simulated moving bed system, fluidized bed system, pulse bed system and rotating bed system. These are the different you know adsorption desorption system in this moving condition. Fluidized bed adsorber here uh, one of the important uh, advantage of this fluidized bed adsorber is that that solid particles are being fluidized uh, either by trace uh, wise or continuous uh, way uh, to get that more mixing and also uh, more contact between you know solute and uh, adsorbent. So the fluidized bed uh, here in this type of fluidized bed you will see that uh, it is called tray uh, wise fluidized bed uh, and also conjugated or hybrid system with that you know adsorption system. So, the fluidized bed here in this case consists of two sections one will be adsorption section and another will be desorption section as shown in the picture here and the adsorption section sheep trays are used with the raw gas that is passing up as uh, given the direction here uh, through the sheaves of the tray and thus fluidizing the solid adsorbent particles and from the adsorption section the solid pass to the desorption section and then solids flow down through the free heating tubes here as shown in the picture and steam is used uh, uh, for indirect uh, you know heating in both the sets of tubes of that uh, adsorption and desorption systems. At the bottom of that unit you will see that the regenerated solids you know are to be picked up by a carrier gas and which flows upward through a gas lift line which is you know placed in the center line of this you know fluidized bed. At the top that solid particles that means adsorbent you can say that it will be settled out after getting that regeneration mode and it will be settled out onto the top tray again to repeat that you know adsorption process in this you know fluidized bed. So it will be a cycle uh, wise that will be, it will be there that in the adsorption section that will be adsorption process or desorption section that solids will be regenerated and that solids will be again used to that gas lifting line and then it will be again falling downward through tray wise. So this is the you know fluidized bed adsorber one typical you know arrangement or typical procurement of this fluidized bed adsorber. Sometimes without tray also can be used for that gaseous stream component separation by this adsorption uh, process by some suitable adsorbent. Then rotating bed you know adsorber here you will see that in this picture it is shown that there will be some provisions of that packing uh, bed where this packing bed will be you know rotating at a certain you know flow rate and some gas inlet with that gaseous pollutants to be passed through that rotating uh, pack bed and also the liquid also will be you know passed through that bed uh, where that liquid uh, you know in the liquid medium that gaseous molecules can be adsorbed just by you know passing through that you know solid bed. So there will be wide fraction through which that liquid will be passing through at that rotation and uh, the gaseous uh, molecules will be adsorbed onto the surface uh, of the adsorbent or it can be you know adsorbed on the mol uh, liquid itself also. So polluted air from the manufacturing process large air flow you can say passes through the process zone while the packing rotor turns here this is the packing rotor it will be turns and in this case volatile organic compounds that will be carried in this air that will be flowed you know that will be adsorbed by the rotors zeolite materials here in this as a packing material it will be as a zeolite you know material and then purified air it will be returned to the purified air to be returned to the atmosphere by this you know duct. So in this case gas is coming here in this you know chamber with volatile component mixture and it will be come in contact with that you know zeolite material okay and this zeolite material with the liquid it will be getting contact 
you know immense contact with that you know zeolite materials with that gaseous inlets and also liquid and then that uh, volatile components will be come in contact to get more contact that you know zeolite uh, here and from that zeolite that liquid uh, volatile components will be transferred to that you know liquid and then it will be uh, taken out from that liquid outlet. So, in this way we can say that rotating bed adsorber can be used ok. And then coming to that ion exchange, here in this picture also it is shown that an ion from a solution is to be exchanged for a similarly charged ion attached to an immobile solid particle till it become saturated. Here the immobile solid materials may be some adsorbent that may be some cationic in nature, some will be you know anionic in nature. So, ion from the solution which is to be exchanged by the solid materials ok. Here in this case one example it is given the ions of you will see that calcium ions which, which will be you know the exchanged by that sodium ion from the solution. The you know calcium ion which is you know conjugated in this adsorbent uh, that is called solid surfaces and this then cationic or calcium ion it will be you know exchanged by the sodium ion from the solution here. So, the solid ion is uh, solid ion exchange particles ok are either naturally occurring inorganic zeolites or synthetically produced organic resins. So, you can use different types of materials here as a cation or anionic you know material as an adsorbent here. So, here you see that uh, how that sodium uh, ion is being uh, you know exchanged by this uh, calcium ion here. So, this is basically a ion exchange process. So, classification of ion exchange resin here two types of you know ion exchange will be there one will be called you know cation exchanger another will be called anion exchanger. You will see that in cation exchanger it has positively charged mobile ions that will be available for exchange whereas, anion exchanger it will have some exchangeable ions which are negatively charged. Both the anion and cations uh, resins in, in this case suppose as an example are produced from the same basic organic polymers they differ in the you know ionizable group attached to the hydrocarbon network also. Some will be strong acid cation resins similar behavior of that strong acid cation resins to that of strong acid and the resins are highly ionized in both the acids and the salt as shown in the you know picture and also that uh, uh, equation here and uh, they can convert a metal salt to the corresponding acid by following reaction here the hydrogen and sodium forms of strong acid resins. Whereas, some will be weak acid cation resins here in this case in a weak acid resins the ionizable group is a carboxylic acid as opposed to that sulfonic acid group used in a strong you know acid resins. Some strong base anion resins also that may be you will see that a strong base resins are highly ionized like strong acid resins and these are used in the hydroxide form for water deionization and also they will react with the anions in solution and can convert an acid solution to pure water. Weak base anion solutions in that case uh, you will see that it is also uh, like weak acid resins in that case the degree of ionization will be you know, strongly influenced by uh, you know pH uh, level. The weak base resins exhibit minimum exchangeable capacity above a pH of 7.0 and in this case it will not have actually that hydroxide ion form as does the strong base resin. Also you will see that uh, the less expensive weakly bases uh, reagents such as ammonia or a sodium carbonate can be employed for this. Now, application of that ion exchange here water softening to remove its hardness by exchanging calcium ions for sodium ions, deionization of water or to remove uh, all ions in the water, treatment of tray effluents, example process water from you know metal finishing, even separation and purification of products from bio reactors. Then coming to the point that chromatography, what is that? This chromatography also this is a basically uh, that identification of that uh, organic or inorganic components from the solution just by adsorbing it onto a surface. Here in this case uh, this uh, chromatography concept is the uh, first actually coined just by 
Russian botanist that is called, uh, his name is Mikhail Swet. He has given this first term uh, in 1906. And the first analytical use of this chromatography was described by James and Martin in 1952 for the use of gas chromatography for the analysis of fatty acid mixers. And this is basically a techniques of the separation, identification and purification of the components of the mixer for qualitative and quantitative analysis that is why it is called that you know chromatography. Basis of chromatography is basically uh, it is based on size and shape also total charge whether this you know groups is hydrophobic or hydrophilic in nature and also that uh, binding capacity of that you know surfaces so that solid surface which are being used. Also it is based on that molecular characteristics and interaction type like ion exchange, surface absorption, partition and size exclusion. Also other uh, type of chromatography also do there that is based on that stationary bed like you know column bed, thin layer bed, even uh, you know paper chromatography bed like this. Now what is the basic principle of chromatography? This is basically one of the phase that will works as the immobile porous bed which is called stationary phase as shown in the picture here or in the slide and the other phase uh, that will work as a uh, you know mobile fluid that flows over the stationary phase under gravity. And during that movement of the sample under gravity a separated result is formed by the repeated desorption and absorption in the direction of the mobile phase migration. And in this case an interaction between that molecules that will be physical okay, and also involves the weak chemical bonds like dipole-dipole interaction and hydrogen bond formation and adhere to the stationary components. And components that adhere strongly to the stationary phase that will move slowly than those uh, uh, who adhere quickly there. So this is the basic principle of that chromatography. And in this case some factors of course to be you know remember based on which that chromatography, uh, chromatography depends on like partition between liquid liquid affinity between molecular weight even characteristics related to liquid solid adsorption. And commonly employed chromatography are like liquid column chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, gel permeation chromatography, affinity chromatography, dye ligand chromatography, gas chromatography, thin layer chromatography, paper chromatography, pseudo affinity chromatography, high pressure liquid chromatography, even hydrophobic interaction chromatography. These are the different uh, types of you know chromatography it is being done. Okay? And application here you will see that in pharmaceutical sector, even chemical industry, food industry, forensic science, even molecular biology uh, studies they are uh, actually this chromatography process are being used there. Okay? So in that case sometimes you know you have to detect some unknown compounds and uh, also what will be the purity of that mixture that can be assessed by this chromatography. Also testing of water samples and also you know checks air quality. Also uh, what are the quantity of pesticides or some oil compounds in that you know mixer that can be also assessed by this chromatography. Is there any additives uh, in the food uh, or not? Is there any you know uh, nutritional quality of that you know food or not that can be assessed by this chromatography. Even in forensic pathology and crime uh, you know scene you will see that sometimes you you need to test that blood or their hair samples of that uh, crime. And also like HPLC high pressure liquid chromatography is being used in protein separation like insulin purification, plasma fractionation, even enzyme purification etc. Even some other departments like fuel industry, biotechnology and biochemical process they are also they are using this chromatography process for their you know analysis of components. So I think here we have discussed lot of things about that adsorption, what are the mechanism of adsorption, what are the different types of adsorption, what is the desorption process, how the desorption happen, what is the adsorption process, also what is the you know ion exchange process, what is the chromatography, what are the applications of ion you know exchange even chromatography even what is the basic difference of physical absorption and chemical absorption all those things that we have discussed in the uh, lecture. So uh, I think you understood these things and uh, 
more about this adsorption we will discuss uh, in the next lecture there we will uh, uh, discuss uh, about that analysis of adsorption by isotherms okay so thank you for uh, giving attention have a nice day